Hi everyone, in today's lesson we're going to talk about a concept called Rolle's Theorem. So I'm just going to read from here. Uh, Rolle's Theorem essentially states that any real valued differentiable function that attains equal values at two distinct points must have at least one stationary point somewhere between them, that is, a point where the first derivative or the slope of the tangent line to that graph of the function is in fact zero. So in other words, <laughs> I know that was a mouthful. Um, in other words, if you've got two stationary points, A and B, they are two points that have the same Y values, such that there will be a C value in the middle where the slope of the tangent line will be equal to zero. Remember, that's called a critical value, right? A critical value is where the derivative is equal to zero or my slope of my tangent line is horizontal. So what am I going to ask you to do? So for each problem, find the value of C that satisfies Rolle's theorem. So basically what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to find the value for C here that's in the middle where my tangent line is zero. So you're given two points of an interval, A and B. So this point is negative two and zero. So let's see if we can do this graphically. So when x is negative 2, right, these are x values of your interval. So when x is negative 2, it looks like y is down here at negative 3. And when x is 0, it looks like it's also down there at negative 3. So here is your interval from a to b. And they want to know the c value that will make a horizontal tangent line. And you can kind of answer this graphically, right? The horizontal tangent line is right here at x equals negative 1. So the answer to this question from problem number 1 is c is equal to negative 1. But the whole point about Rolle's theorem is that you can do this algebraically. Remember, calculus is an old math where we didn't have calculators, so we needed to use things like theorems to solve for these things. So in order to find a horizontal tangent, we need to find a critical value. So my first step is going to be to do such that. So step one, find the critical value. And remember to find a critical value, we're taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. So if this is my original function up here, I'm going to take my derivative, so f prime of x. I'm going to take the 2, bring it in front, so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4x, and then the derivative of negative 4x is just negative 4, and then the derivative of the constant 3 is 0. So to find the critical value, I have to set the derivative, f prime, equal to 0, and solve. So I'm going to factor out a negative 4, and by doing so, I'm going to get x plus 1. And I can do my t-chart, negative 4 equals 0, I reject. And then this side is, in fact, negative 1. So it looks that negative 1 is the answer that we got before. So what we should do next is write a statement that shows that we understand the concept that's happening here. So since f of x is a continuous function, or is continuous, over the interval of negative 2 to 0 and f of negative 2 equals f of 0, then the c value must equal negative 1. So take a minute and drop that down, and then I'll explain it in a second. Okay, so by saying it's a continuous function, you're saying it's differentiable and continuous over this interval, which it is. You don't have to pick up your pen. And f of negative 2 equals f of 0. f of negative 2 is negative 3, and f of 0 is 3, negative 3. So see, these are your two stationary points. So by writing this, you're telling me that these are my stationary points and that there exists a horizontal tangent right here at the x value of negative 1. All right, so let's take a look at example number two. Um, example number two is actually not going to work algebraically, so we're actually just going to do it graphically. Um, so find the value of c 
that satisfies Rolle's theorem. So here's my interval from negative 1 to 3. So when x is negative 1, it looks like the y is 2. When x is 3, it also looks like the y is 2. So that's perfect. We have our two stationary points that have the same y value. And we're looking for uh, horizontal tangents. So I see one here at x equals 0. And I see another one here at x equals 2. So that's it. That, that works for Rolle's theorem. So the c values are going to be 0 and 2. Again, this one doesn't work algebraically. I, I wouldn't give you one um, like this on the test unless I said, you know, it doesn't work that way. Uh, so don't stress about that. All right, just for purposes of time, I think we're going to skip 3 and 4. And we're going to move on to examples 5 and 6. So the question says, explain why Rolle's theorem does not actually apply in the cases below. So in order to use Rolle's theorem, we need to have a differentiable continuous function. And number five is called a rational function. And rational functions, meaning fractions, have holes and vertical asymptotes. And things of those nature will actually make the function discontinuous, and then therefore the theorem doesn't apply. So if I got a question like this, that's a fraction, first thing we need to check for holes or horizontal asymptotes, excuse me, vertical, holes or vertical asymptotes. Those are actually going to be the values where the function is not continuous. So the way that we do that is we factor. So we factor the top and we factor the bottom. So the top, x squared minus 4, is dots. So we can make that x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then 2x on the bottom we can leave alone. Now, since nothing cancels out, nothing on top that's the same on the bottom, that means there's no holes. So no holes because nothing cancels. So then what you're left with is trying to find any vertical asymptotes. And the way that you find those is by setting the denominator equal to 0. So to find a VA, a vertical asymptote, you're going to set the denominator 2x equal to 0 and solve. Divide by 2, so we get x is equal to 0. So what you just found is this. So since there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, the function is not continuous over the interval of, which was given here, negative 2 to 2. Therefore, Rolle's theorem will not apply. So just for purposes of time, I think we'll end there. Uh, you do not have to finish this worksheet for homework, um, but please make sure you jot down at least what I have, and we'll go over it more in class tomorrow. All right, have a good night.